The people you have in your hands says official program marking the visit of the Minister of Gender and Development of the Republic of Liberia, Honorable Julia Duncan Cassell, to the Staten Island Labyrinth Committee. And we will go straight on. It says today, it says the time, and the time is when we are starting. And with our further ado, we'll begin the first item, which is opening prayers. And we have a member of the Southern Island Labyrinth Ministerial Alliance, who is Reverend G. Lorenzo Stevens, to do the opening prayer. Shall we all stand at this time? The prayer of Moses in Psalms 90. Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generation before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Eternal God, we thank you for this occasion. We come like Nehemiah to hear from home. God, we pray that as the news come to us, we'll be able to be a benefactor and also to benefit those informations that we will gather tonight. We thank you for the minister that you have brought safely to us. We pray now, Lord, that in this gathering, that your presence will direct us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I should say that's my reverend of the New Life Church where I am a deacon. Uh, we will move forward by inviting my able vice president who has put together this program you have here as Madam Orita Vesna Yates to welcome us into this special occasion. Yeah. Honorable Julia Duncan Cassell, Minister of Gender and Development, members of the clergy present here. Deacon Telly Brown, President of the Staten Island Librarian Community Association, the Chairman and members of SILCA, all here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Staten Island Librarian Community Association most respectfully welcome our honorable guest, Madam Julia Duncan Cassell, Minister of Gender and Development, Republic of Liberia. This community is privileged to have you in our midst so as to have a personal exchange of views with you concerning our beloved Liberia. We, the officers and members of the Staten Island Liberian Association, welcome you and your dedication to our island, and we hope that this exchange tonight be fruitful and rewarding. It is also an honor to have you to have our Liberian government official staff by our community to address our people and help provide answers or clarifications to some of the issues and development that are taking place in our beloved country, Liberia. The program tonight will compress of a presentation by our guest and following, we will have a period of question and answer. It is, it is hoped that we will all behave respectfully and will all leave here with a sense of pride and dignity. Once more, on behalf of all, all of us here present and those, of, those on their way, we welcome you, Madam Minister, and we hope your stay with us on, on Staten Island be one that we'll always cherish. Without further delay, ladies and gentlemen, the occasion. Thank you very much, Madam Abel Vice President. 
the lady who is destined to help me do great work on the, in this community. We will move forward by inviting our Reverend Bishop Philip Simray to just make a special statement on behalf of the religious community of Staten Island. Grace to you from God and honor from us to all of you in this audience. Madam Minister, on behalf of the Staten Island Ministerial Alliance, I want to wholeheartedly welcome you in our midst. I pray that your staying with us will not only be blessings to you, but also those who are here and those who are at large. Since this is a political gathering in the form of a town hall meeting, allow me to convey to the President of the Republic of Liberia, through your office, our profound congratulations to her for the elections that she won. We are very proud of her because she is making Liberia to be proud. This time we know that Liberia is no more member, just a member sitting in the United Nations, but Liberia is now heading yes. areas in the United Nations. One thing before I take my seat, please let her know that we had to appreciate the announcement that she made concerning appointments of leaders of her ruling government. However, we are appealing to her through your office for one of our sons or daughters from Staten Island to be numbered among those people of her ruling government. And to you, my sons and daughters, if your name will be called, and if you will hear your name over the radio, please make sure to call me first. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bishop. I think that's an embodiment and total expression of the standard and library community. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, indeed, we are all proud for our leader, our president that we've indicated. And the expressions here are serious. We will at this point move forward by making a presentation. You know, we've done so well, we've waited, we've had our dinner, we've had a lot of other things. And we would not enjoy being here so much more without uh, getting to the main reason for our being here today, which is to interact with our honored guest. And that is why you will see that you have a program, but as guests, as master of the ceremony, I always have the master copy. Okay? Uh, okay, well, with that said, we will go to the item that we have here as the next item, which is a presentation to our other guest, Madam Julia Duncan Cassell, by the Staten Island Liberian Community Women. So I will now ask my Vice President and the rest of the Staten Island Liberian Community Women, that is my Jean, Ma Akwe, all of our grandmothers and our sisters to join us up here I will make this presentation to our honored guest, Madam Julia Duncan Castle, so that when she leaves here tonight or tomorrow, she will know that there is a place she visited that appreciated her so heartily. So, Madam Vice President, my Jean, my Akwe, 
It's just a little thing we put together so that when you get in your office, put it somewhere, just to know that there are people here that appreciate the work that you've done and that you are doing and that you will do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we just... Yeah, just... Go to my chin. Yeah, hand it. Yeah, it says, Start Not in Liberia Community Association presents, okay, I will commence. Start Not in Liberia Community Association presents this award to Honorable Julia Duncan Kasser, Minister of Gender and Development of the Republic of Liberia, March 2, 2012. This is from the women, the officers, and everybody sitting here. Thank you. Okay, she want to come around. Yes, yes, oh, you have to take a picture. I to I want to I want to to take a picture. I want to take a picture. I want to take a and you one more when you are going to one more when you are going to one more when you are going to one more when you are No, not Facebook picture. The picture that will go. <laughs> well, true that. Why don't they go far with Facebook? <laughs> International. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, our women here, for making us proud. We appreciate that a whole lot, and I'm sure this will go a long way in having the means to remember what is happening here tonight. We will move straight on to the next item, which is introduction of the guest of honor. And who, are, who is our Minister of Gender and Development, Republic of the Bureau, Madam Julia Duncan Cassette. And that is going to be done for us by Madam Maggie Gibson Clay. Good evening, folks. The Honorable, Honorable Minister, delegates from Liberia, distinguished guests, fellow Staten Islanders, I take great pleasure and distinct honor in introducing to this August body the Republic of Liberia's third Minister of Gender and development. Honorable Julia Duncan Cassell. Honorable Duncan Cassell, prior to her appointment, served the government of Liberia as superintendent, Grand Bassett County, for six consecutive years. As chief administrator of one of Liberia's most strategic counties. She, she oversaw investments in the county's infrastructure such as roads, health care, communications, and education. Grand Pasa County got her own community college show. Hey. Yeah. That today has an enrollment of 964 students for neighboring counties like Sano, Riverses, and Magibi, thus providing a foundation for economic activities as well as improving the quality of life of county residents. She was able also to ensure that development funds earmark for the county were used in mission-critical areas in order to reduce poverty 
and provide job opportunities. She also served for six years as chairman of the superintendent's council. What a great woman. During her tenure as superintendent, Madam Cassell had the opportunity to engage with and worked closely with the local community, specifically the women in the rural parts of Liberia. That's why we wanted all our old ladies then to come by the same coach. Honorable Julia Duncan Cassell is the current <laughs> president of Michael Barrow Sports <laughs> Association in Liberia. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am again proud to present to you Honorable Minister Julia Duncan Cassell. I thank you. Thank you, and you may have your seats. Fellow Liberians, first of all, I must apologize for being late. It was not done intentionally, but as you know, as a government official and head of a delegation, we had a lot of side meetings, and so the last was the South African group, and it took up a lot of our time, but we apologize. But we knew we were coming home. When we were asked to come and speak to our fellow Liberians on Staten Island and the association, we couldn't turn the offer down. Because for the 30 plus years that we live in the diaspora too, we served as president for eight years, two terms of the Liberian Community Association of Northern California. So we know what it is to be in the diaspora. We know what it is to be a leader in the community. We know what it is to be eagle to hear from home. So we couldn't turn the invitation down. So I want to say thanks to Maggie for extending us the invitation and thanks to the president and member of the association for agreeing and allowing us to come this evening to bring you greetings. I must say to you that home is home. And we made a decision in 2003 to move back home. We bought a one-way ticket. <laughs> and today, that one-way ticket has paid off. So we are here to say to you too that the option is yours too. You just need one-way ticket. Home is safe. Home is for all of us, especially to our older, our parents, our children, our grandparents, our grandchildren, so that they too can have something to appreciate. The war is way behind us, and we show that through the election box, this gone election that was held in 2011. We bring you greetings from Her Excellency, Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf who is now not only the president of the Republic of Liberia, but a Nobel laureate. So Liberia has produced two in one year time. We came to the UN to attend the CSW, the Commission on the Status of Women, of which Liberia is chairing. And our own ambassador to the UN is the chairperson. So the women of Liberia, I say to the men, our fathers, our brothers, our husbands, our nephews, that we want you all to work along with us. It is not a win or lose situation. It is a situation for all of us to put arms together and move our country forward. The men had it for a long time. We are just saying, just wait a little more longer. <laughs> Give the women another 20 plus years. And see great things happening in Liberia. <laughs> I agree with you, my brother. So I don't want, because of time, I know you have some questions and concerns. 
like they like I was introduced. I serve as superintendent of Grand Bassa County, one of the most productive county, the economic belt of Liberia. And I also serve as chairman of the superintendent council. So I had the opportunity to visit all 15 counties, not just in the capitals, but all in the rural areas. So my ascendancy to the job as gender minister will bring a lot because we've been working. And we hear people talk about women. Gender is not about women. It's about both men and, and women. But at this particular time in our country, gender is focused on women and children. And we are trying to bring the men along because we can do all for the women. If the men are not by our side, we're not succeed. So we have great men that are there to support the work of women. So we just want to ask all of you to continue doing what you're doing. And I heard uh, uh, Bishop Sengwe, you know, <laughs> I will take the message back. I will take the message back. But I would like to stop here to give you all the opportunity and some time so that we can have an interaction instead of me just standing here and talking. I know there's a lot to say about Liberia. I know all of you have cell phones. All of you have the Internet. You have uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. You have all of, all of it. So you kind of know more than I do. But I think being on the ground is still a little thing that you don't know. So that little thing that you're not, you're not sure of, we're yet to give you directions. If we can answer it, we'll lead you to where you can get the correct answer. So thank you all. Okay, you've heard our honored guest speak. And like she rightly said, we have a lot of information on Liberia. But as somebody on the ground, you know, back in the days, on the ground, uh, she still has an urge. And it is our urge we come here tonight to tap into. We come here tonight to just get clarifications. We come here tonight to know a little more. I know we will ask questions. I know we make comments. But let us not come to educate people here. By virtue of the premises some of us will want to give. The premises, keep them. Do more to ask the question. Impressions, good. Do more to ask the question. Even if it is just, Madam, who won the election in Liberia? <laughs> ask the question. My teacher used to say, there is no stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that is not asked. Okay, so do yourself the favor tonight. Let us only come here tonight to learn from one person. When we begin to, to reorganize our intellectual discourse forums and forums, that's when we will call you to come and educate us as Staten Islanders. But tonight, it is the privilege, the right of Madame Duncan to tell us what's happening in Liberia and not vice versa. With that said, I will open, we will open the floor for questions. Go right ahead, madam. Thank you. I, will, I forgot. So I want to correct it. I just want to introduce those who came with me. <laughs> Sitting at the table, you know, Gilfangalo, but she escorted us. She works for the UN, Liberian UN mission. So she said. Ms. Abu ba Mrs. Abu Bakat, my personal assistant from the Ministry of Gender. <laughs> Ms. Pale, Pale Stenana, the Director of Women at the Ministry of Gender. <laughs> Ma Sarah, 
is the president of the rural women of Sino County. <laughs> also, yeah, is Rebecca. Rebecca is the pre national president for the Cross Border Women Trade Women Association. Oh. Also, yeah, with us is I want to say Katima from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the gender focal person at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We also brought a huge delegation of civil society, women network, um, thing that's all around now, you know, visiting different friends and family members. But I can show you that Liberia brought a huge delegation, so you should be proud. Oh, um, <laughs> she's uh, an NGO, but she's also on the board of Miss Wagon. Miss Wagon is an organization, an NGO that was established by Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. So, Bundy is a member of the board. Yes. Thank you. So, you can start your question. Like the president said, no question is stupid. The only stupid question is the one I ask. Out of way, left, right, front, back. Yeah, Minister Wilson West from Ohio Jennings today. I'm Cyrus Cobra, Staten Island. I'm a leader from Grand Coulee County. I you know you have a lot of expertise and experience of when you say yourself as a superintendent and all that. Uh, the question that I have to my is in the county development funds that the are superintendent playing in, because especially for my county that I know about, you say you visit the home in 18 counties. And Greg in the county have to have a superintendent of the principal building. And he played in the county development for which was about 30,000 US dollars. And he built some houses that were not even equivalent to that money. Um, what was your input at that time when you did a visit there? Or did you make a visit there and you visit the county that really wanted to Thank you. Besides being superintendent of Grand Pass, County, I said to I am the chair, I was. Can I superintend anymore? <laughs> Even though we get superintend in Barcelona, yeah? yeah. So I still wearing two hats. But I myself has been accused of misappropriating county development fund. Mm -hmm. You know, it's under her leadership. Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, that people in Liberia even got to know what was in the budget or even got to know what county development was. But when she decided that the county each would get $200,000, the legislature decided that they would put a coffee in the law. So it was enacted by law that members of the community should serve as project manager that you bring people from your various district into into the city and they elect a project manager and a project team to manage the funds. The legislature serve as the chairperson on the county development council. So the county development fund is not just managed by the superintendent alone. Okay, the legislature, the senators, the representatives from those counties have a role to play. They go into the various districts they have meetings and they decide which project should be carried on. All the role, except maybe the superintendent decide to have superpower in his county over his senator and representative. But in, in the county, the way it works is that the chairman of that development council is headed by the caucus, the chairman caucus of each individual county. At that meeting, and the representative go to the district, have a meeting with the people and they decide what development they want in the district. When that decision is made, a resolution is passed. When that resolution is passed, based on the amount, you have to put it off a bid. When the project is bid upon, it is then brought before the superintendent for approval. Because while all of the documents are in place, it was done by the committee. The chairman of the caucus, who is the, is the chairman of the council, has approved it. Then you go on and execute the project. How people say superintendent ate the money, whether they, they want to own a company that bid upon the project, I can't speak for that because I personally do not own any company in Liberia that's into construction or into anything. But when people say the funds are mismanaged, you try to give the local authority, the local contractors, the job. 
And most time when they get the money for the job, before they even start in the job, they start telling everybody, thank you. By the time they don't do the job, the job is done half hassle. And because you are the chief administrator for the county, you take the responsibility. I'm not speaking for any individual superintendent. I'm just speaking on the process, how it is supposed to be run. So then you have what we call M and E money uh, uh, evaluation monitors. You have also your county development officer. You also have the um, uh, civil affairs, United Nations. Your partners are there, and you supposed to, these people are all there to m monitor and make sure that these funds that are allocated for the county are used properly. So in the event that anything went wrong, it will not be just the superintendent. Other people should be implicated too. Then you will ask, where's the chairman of the caucus of that county? Because he's signatory. You will ask, where is the community person that is the project manager for that project? Because he's a signatory to that account. All of those uh, development accounts is not just one signature. It's not one signature. So no one person can do any mismanagement by themselves. It has to be done collectively. But most time it's always the superintendent that take the blunt of the blame. But the good thing about it, the good thing about it is that when people start talking about it, then you get more attention on it and then the work gets done. I don't know what happened in Grand Gide. I visited Grand Gide and some of the projects with the president and we dedicated some projects. So I would say if the people in Grand Gide have a problem, they should go back to, to also who was the chairman of the caucus because the chairman of the caucus is also the chairman of the county development council. Thank you. <laughs> Orita, I'm not the superintendent in Bassa, but I'm still from Grand Bassa County, and I still hold that dear to me. I'm a stakeholder in the county. Um, and she talked about the coastal area. Okay, Rita, I grew up on Atlantic Street, and I live in the coastal area because my aunt and my uncle ran the coastal area, and where I grew up. That whole place is gone. Climate change is real. I started the, the awareness on the erosion in Bassa. I'm glad to say that we got some fund, some money from the Jet Fund. It's a group out of Europe through UNDP. The experts are all down there now. They are training the locals because um, the Grand Bassa is not the only county. It's from Kitma, Montserrat, and Bassa, but because Bassa crowd the loudest. Because we brought it to the international community attention. So we are being treated first. So the experts are there now. They are training the locals for the, the kind of rocks, the rock crutching. They are training them to build what's called the basket that they will be trying to do the coastal defense. So the project is ongoing right now as we speak. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I don't want to go the same family. So, Bobby, one of our very good friends here in this community. Welcome, African. Honorable Minister. Uh, it's an honor to be here. My question, just like I asked the President, is how, what uh, incentives are there for non Liberians, friends of Liberia, who are interested in either investing or who have been working with the Liberian community to just improve, develop, and empower uh, the country as a whole and its citizens? What incentives are there for foreign investors? Well, um, the good thing is you're a black man. <laughs> so you have a room in Liberia. That's right. I already have. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a room in Liberia. As far as it relates to incentive, it will depend on the, the size and the type of business that you will be looking into. Um, and that will have to do with the National Investment Commission. They are online. They have their website. It's a very active web website. And most of the frequently asked questions are on there. So I don't want to give you anything that, because that is not my area. You know, in Liberia, everybody got their area. So, <laughs> so that is not my area. 
So I would ask um, that you can follow up either on the website, NIC, the National Investment Commission website. I've been on there. I've referred other people to it. But I think there's a lot of possibility. At least you are looking into entrepreneurship. Yeah, you're not saying I'm just going, I want to go to Liberia and fold up my arms. You're saying I want to go to Liberia and invest and do business and become a Liberian in Liberia. So we will welcome it. And I show that, you know, there has to be something in the investment code that can address that issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this way, Paul, Eric Thomas, Johnson. Uh, first, I'd like to congratulate you, uh, Mr. Furman, Minister. Uh, could you please comment on the goals of the ministry and what do you hope to do in about 150 days to accomplish some of those goals. <laughs> well, the goal of the ministry is the national goal of the national government. The Ministry of Gender and Development is to do more policies and agenda for women and children right now. Right now we have, like I said to you, the structure of the rural women. So we're making sure that the rural women are cared for because they are the most vulnerable, the most hard work and less attention is paid to them, so that is our role. The cross-border trade women, our women who go from country to country, you know, selling their produce and buying things to come back and sell. Uh, the girls, the adolescent girls, the girls in the streets, getting them off the streets, and the children. You know, we already have what's called the children's parliament. Okay? So we are working with all of those groups to make sure that their voices are heard and that they, are, they form part of the national agenda. In my bureau. Okay, back on this side again. Okay, I'm working on this side. Eddie, yes. Good uh, My name is Emmanuel Weeger. I, uh, I serve this community as uh, founder of the Second Chance uh, Gospel Music Foundation. Uh, currently, I work with Ambassador Dix, former uh, Ambassador Undertaker, and Ambassador Bull, and the Modern Soiree. We, we have a project that's going back to Liberia called Hope for Health, um, basically geared towards uh, the disenfranchised and those that are in the rural area that have access to, to medicine and the medication. Um, and we're, we're collecting resources from different places, information, donation, and stuff like that. We, we got a report from the Columbia University. And it, it really struck our team because the report certainly uh, articulated the fact that the concession agreement that are going to our country is helping the investors that come from the diasporas. Um, it it helped those that, that, that develop and work on those concessions, but if those that live in the, in the, in the, the areas of the, the concession agreement, the development there, they're being disenfranchised even further where their farm lands are taken away from them, and certain things are promised to them that's not coming through. Um, I'm, I was just wondering, this is just a general question, if you have any knowledge, because we have research to Dr. Coleman on the ground uh, for the uh, uh, health ministry. I know Dr. Coleman. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so we're looking into that, but do you have any specific view as far as that's concerned that you can help mm -hmm. us understand here? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I've been very involved as superintendent of Grand Bassa County. I like to use that county because that county is a blessed county. You have Asla Metal, which is operating in three counties, Nimba, Bom, and Bassa. The first time in, this, in the history of Liberia that money was allocated to what's called the Social Development Fund, the $3 million. So Nimba County gets $1.5 million, Bom County gets half a million dollar, and Grand Bassa gets $1 million. Okay, so if you say that the people are disenfranchised, no, from the one million dollar that Grand Bassa County have or receive yearly, it was because of that money that we put aside two point two million dollar. That today the construction of a community college in Pinsbury is being built. Over the years, Grand Bassa County were not blessed with a technical school or with a vocational school or with a community college. So we had meeting, consultative meetings with the citizens. It was important that most time when the young children from Bassa graduated from high school, they migrated to Monrovia, they never looked back at the county. 
So it was important that we started this community college so that the kids can feel that they, got, they can stay home too and be there with their parents. And so that college today, we are very proud that house over 900 and some more students. Besides that, out of that money that we get from Asta Mittal, Grand Bassa County, under our leadership, the legislature, the citizens decided that we wanted our own raw equipment. And so what we did, we put it out for bid. We have five heavy duty machines now because you know road network, farm to market roads, whenever it rains, the roads are terrible. We have to rely on, on the companies or rely on public works and public works couldn't do it all by themselves. So the citizen decided that we should get our own equipment. And not only that we get our own equipment, Ken Macklin, if you know Bassa, where used to be the road maintenance uh, uh, department of public works. That place was broken down, destroyed. It's been rehabilitated. The machine, the sustainability program to maintain the machines. We just did not buy the machine, but we made sure we put a plan in place that the machine would be maintained and sustained. And so those machines will be housed at Camp Macklin, the old Jammer Camp area. And we, they, we brought a team down to train local uh, uh, Liberians to be able to operate the machines. That is going on right now. Besides that, the money from our social development fund, we've built clinics in the most uh, 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 affected area. Say, for example, in Basa, the train runs through Gobli, district number three. So that is an affected area. That place had a junior high school. With that social development money, we were able to carry the Gobli Junior High School to a modern high school. And I can proudly say that the students of those schools came second in the Republic of Liberia in the YA. All of them. So, I know that in Bum County, besides the Asta Metal State money, they get money from China Union. But those money have just started coming from China Union. In Nima County, in Grand Jilla, you got a Putu uh, 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 Mountain, you got in Bumi, you got uh, uh, Sam Darby. So, all of those companies now under her leadership. Madam Josie said, besides what they pay directly to government for taxes, money I gave him directly to the county. And especially the affected area, it is stipulated in those uh, uh, concession agreement that a certain percentage goes to the affected areas that those concession companies are doing business in. So to, ask, to, to, to further uh, and address your issue about the land issue, land in our country is said that the land is owned by government. The people in the county are the custodian of the land. So you have the right to any size of land as long as you don't have a deed. Once you have a deed to that land, you're supposed to stop paying taxes. How many of our people after work can afford to pay taxes? Mm -hmm. And people hold on to land and say, because our ancestral land, we have 10,000 acres. They don't even know how big 10,000 acres is. Mm -hmm. So if you have a company that's going to go there and open school, open clinic, and then people start fighting and say, no, that our land, you can take the land, then you go back and ask them, how much of this land do you need for farming? Now we have the land, ref the land commission that is looking at that. Every Liberian is entitled to land. But how much of it? Are we just going to sit on the land and don't develop our country? And say because of my ancestral land? It's okay to do that. But you can't take, keep the, the, the country hostage because you say you want to keep on to land when you yourself do not have the capacity to develop that land. But we do understand that, yes, there are people with actual deeds for land. There are people with actual certificate that government granted them deeds for land. There are those there that are actual owners of land. So they should be protected. Then there are those who just sit there and can't even plant their own pepper or cassava. And they say, oh, that my grandpa was here before, so that my land. So if government say, if you say the land is yours, how much of it is yours? So all of these things are going to be addressed now in the land reform, the land commission, so that people can actually own the land and also be responsible for the land. You don't just take the deed and say, I have a land, and you don't do nothing with the land. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we will one time. We are going to come for this side. Uh, to Madam Johnson, who will ask the question. <laughs>
Madam Superintendent, and now Minister. Yes. Every time she comes here, I run into her, and I'm standing <laughs> on the opposite side asking my sister a question. Uh, just to follow up on the land deal, uh, I can remember 2008 when the president came into our state of uh, Texas for the Methodist Convention. My late husband and I met her, mm-hmm. and we told her the work. Uh, during the war, we established a feeding program, and we didn't do it, you know, publicly or anything. You sneak into Liberia, feed whatever you can do. But then we have all these children coming from out of nowhere. And so we decided that we were going to go back. I'm from Riverside. So my husband from Grand Bassa County. I show your birth certificate at Grand Bassa. So I went back to Liberia to bury my husband. And after that, 2008, I, uh, I decided that I'm a widow, but I'm a minister, and I'm, a, uh, I'm an ambassador of Christ. So I can't just sit down. So I decided to go back into Liberia. I was directed to the compound number two area. I think I went to your office when I went. And then I met a roadblock because of the land situation. Right now, the only thing I'm doing on our land is I will find because I don't have a D in my hand. And I talk to the natives and all that. But every time I go to Liberia, it's like, you know, they still got to lay on this whole land deal. So I want to know, I'm raising funds, I'm ready to go and build a school to do what I need to do before God called me home. And so I need to know how fast is this process going. I have surveyed the land, paid a whole lot of money to do that. But I just want to know, when can I leave here to go and start building my school? Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. And I remember when she came and went into my office with the group. Um, you know, because of the devastation of the war in Liberia, a lot of our people became dependent. And then with all of the NGO, as much as they have helped us, they have destroyed us. As much as they have helped us, they have destroyed us. Our people, the dependency syndrome. And so when you go there with good intent to say, I want to land, everybody will come up front and say, oh, we own the land. And then they start to, and you go with good faith and good will. I mean, not the amount of land cases that we have to judge. That they will take the people money from them. And then the next time you go back, they say, oh, the poor, that they're not a rightful owner, that they all have family that own it. We had an incident with the, the Magibi massacre. Even though it happened in Barsa, but I'd be glad when they say Magibi. <laughs> with two first cousins, Senator Roland Khan and Charles Benny. And so many children, innocent children, lost their lives because of land issue. Right now, if you go somewhere and people come with these, and by the time you say this is my land, the next year, you people coming or with colors and, 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 and guns and all kind of thing against you and running you away. So it is a serious issue. She had an issue where she wanted to do something good, and the people she met with. So I'm aware of the situation. It is still on the books, but like we said, the land commissioner now is looking at everything. And sometimes we say they need to do it like yesterday. But you know, there are a lot of laws that have to be put into place and has to be passed so that it can be enacted. And a lot of times we have the good laws, but we don't have enough, uh, uh, not even the judges, the judiciary system to do the persecution. Because people can know that they're selling you bad land and they get away with it. I've been dupe of land sale. And there are a lot of other persons. So I'm just saying to people, that's why the local government structures are in the county. If you're going to acquire land, your first step should be to the county administrator so that you get that protection. You say, look, I've moved back into the area. I would like to do to get some land in this area. Who is the local authority there? Because people will do things if they know that someone else knows what they're doing. But if you go directly and you meet somebody right at the airport and you say, oh, yes, I just come home, man. I want buy five acres. Oh, can I go? My uncle selling land. You'll get do. But if you go into the county and say, where's the superintendent? I'm going to district number one. I need to see the statutory superintendent. 
the separate territorial superintendent depending on what district because there are administrative districts in each of the counties will show you who is the commissioner for that district and in that district there's a primary chief yeah. and if it's in his chief then there should be a client chief yeah. so you follow the chain of command and I can assure you you will be protected you will be protected but if you don't you'll be doomed Thank you very much. Uh, is all the oh, We've been here pretty long. I we will take two more questions. One from this side and the other from this side. Yes, sir. I'm Reverend Hansma Kamara. Uh, I really want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for some of the good answers that you gave. I'm just a little bit concerned. I'm so glad to hear about the community schools, community colleges. The concern I have is that how much teachers and instructors do you have? Like you have 900 students in Grand Asai room. When I was in Nigeria, you have nine graders teaching fifth grade. High school teaching high school. Uh, my concern is, or the question I want to ask, what programs you have in place to really have good instructors for this community college? Thank you. But before I address the community college, let me tell you about the teaching the teachers now in Liberia. Under her leadership, the teacher institute has been reinstituted. You have CTI. You have one in Riwaji County and you have one on BWR campus. And so it's been, it was redone by the, by the United States government through USAID, where they have trained teachers. And now in order to teach in Liberia schools, you have to be certified, you have to have a certificate. So from elementary, from primary school up, a C certificate, from junior high up, you know, and so forth like that. So there's no teacher right now that's teaching a classroom under government that is not certified, that has a certificate now. And because of that, I mean, in the past, when we got there too, we had students that couldn't even spell their own names and they were teaching other children. So right now, if you find a school that someone is not certified in teaching, that means it's a little family school or a little church school, but all of the government schools, all of the teachers now, before they go on payroll through civil service, because the money that the teachers have been paying now, government is paying their teacher a little more than the private schools. The reason we're having problems because the private schools before, Madam Salif, used to pay the teachers more than the public school. But now all of the public school teachers are on payroll in their own name. They are not taking pay in nobody else's name, and they are being paid very well in every budgetary year. The salary has been increased, so they are all certified. As for the Grand Paso County Community College, I can proudly say to you that college has been headed by Dr. Leva Zanga. And all of the instructors at that college have passed a certification process. We, have, we are teaching vocational skills too. That's why we have a community college, because we have all of these concessions in Basa. So that our, a lot of our young children can be able to fit into the job market. As they learn mechanic, uh, heavy duty machines, l lubrications, they go for training with Autobrush, the Brazilian company that works with Asla Metal. We have what we call Beginner Renewable. They are training our students too. So we are partnering with these companies so that when these kids graduate, they can be able to work with these companies. So that's what we are doing at the Grand Paso County Community College. And the last question will come from here. I think you two is Ella. <laughs> 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 I'm a Castell. Uh, uh, all the colleagues here to congratulate you for your employment as Minister of Gender. And uh, in your opening statement, you indicated that the, the 
uh, ministry is concentrated on women and children. And you also urge the men to join hands in uplifting uh, this process. Do you currently have any program in place that will try to bring along the men in this process? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, we do, but we're working with the younger men now. <laughs> do the children's parliament. <laughs> we are working with the young men right now, you know, so we, we do. Well, we just see right now, we're not seeing that the ministry is solely women's ministry, but the focus right now. It's on women because a lot of the vulnerable people are the women and children. But yes, we work side by side with the men because the men have to appreciate what we are trying to do with the women. Thank you very much, Madam. You served us very much. Well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know we can never get enough. Save us some more, but you know, uh, it's never possible to get it all. So let us rest tonight, noting that we that every good thing must come to an end, and this very good time we've had tonight, this portion has come to an end. The program is not end. I have said, please, we were at this point. We will at this point move to the next item on our program. And I must on behalf of this community say that, Madam, you've racked yourself us. We appreciate the education you provided here. You have highly enlightened us. And I tell you, we could not get any better. Thank you very much. We appreciate this a whole lot. And I must also say, my people, you did very well again tonight. By asking questions that help all of us to learn. Thank you very much. With that said, we'll move to the next item, which is vote of thanks by our honorable, our honorable Mr. Honorable Vama Fofana, who is chairman of the advisory council and also Eastern Regional Vice President for our EULA. Madam Minister, members of your delegation, Reverend Assembly, and members of the Liberian Ministerial Alliance, President Telly Brown, and members of the SICA Executive, Honorable Tunis, the Secretary General of the SICA Advisory Council, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, begin by saying that uh, you are on the verge of becoming a tree blazer. Yeah. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. I yep. sat down there and um, you, you impressed me a lot. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you know, when, um, when I graduated from uh, the University of Notre Dame, I happened to be one of the rapporteurs uh, for the United Nations. At that time, our president, Madame Salif, was a member of the the United Nations set up a committee, the COI, uh, the United Nations Eminent Council, to investigate the genocide in Rwanda. And uh, my name was sent to her, and she looked at the list and said, "There are two librarians in this room, because I'm Bamba, her son of Fumba, and actually my mother is related to her late husband, Mr. Salif. I had a friend from London. He always called me." at the time of elections in Liberia, and his predictions are always correct. He told me that Madame Salih was going to be re-elected, and indeed she was re-elected. Having said that, let me just say that uh, the Union of Liberian Associations in the Americas, of which I'm the Vice President for the Eastern Region, uh, taking care of 16 chapters, including my own President chapter here, is very pleased to be here tonight, and we want to extend a welcome to you and you and your delegation. As a matter of fact, uh, the national president and myself, we had a lengthy discussion, as well as the national vice president, who spoke highly of you 
Her name is Mr. Jones. She is my immediate uh, chief in the union. And she also asked me to extend her personal, you know, thanks and appreciation to you for your coming. She's from Grand Basel, by the way. Let me just say that, that um, Madeleine Albright, the former Secretary of State of the United States, who once said that there is a special place in hell for a woman who does not have other women. Mm. And I can see that you and your boss, our president, are ready to have the rural women in Liberia, mm. which the, the improvement of the living conditions of women, the rural women in Liberia is a priority for the government. And the Union of Liberian Association is ready to work with the uh, national government and the president. As a matter of fact, our president, uh, Honorable Gisler, was in Liberia to embrace the inauguration. And um, our vice president here, by the way, she is the deputy foreign minister of the Union of Liberian Association in America. And I have uh, Uncle Charles Stevens, who is one of the advisors. You see, the Union of Liberian Association in America has put in place some projects. Ambitious projects, but achievable. We we are ready for business. Yeah. We have set up a ULA development funding, we call it UDF. Each Liberian will be charged one hundred and twenty dollars per year. Because our project we want to establish libraries in Liberia, public library in Liberia. A, rec a rec recreational center in Monrovia. The president met with our president of Liberia, and we asked the president to offer us to offer us an acre of land on which this project will be done. We have also gone further to set up a a pool of Liberian professionals that will be willing to go to Liberia on a voluntary basis to contribute to the development of Liberia. Having said that, I know time is too much spent. I don't want to consume much of your time. But as I said earlier, I'm very impressed with the responses, the eloquent responses to the questions that were posed to you, and uh, we're very happy. You know, I'm here in dual capacity. I'm also chairman of the advisory council, so I cannot complete this vote of thanks or remark without extending special thanks to the, uh, the organizers of this event uh, in person. Our Vice President, Madam Ruta Bresman, can you stand please one more time? And our Honorable Secretary, Maggie Gibson, are you ready to go back to Liberia? Yeah. <laughs> are you ready? One-way one -way ticket, though. And of course, our President, uh, uh, Deacon Telly Brown. And we want to thank everybody here for, oh, the Archbishop. Thank you for providing all the space. We are very thankful to you for providing all the space. He's the advocate for this area. We want to thank all of you, the members of the delegation, for coming to make this program a success. And of course, I cannot end by not saying a word to the to the audience here for keeping perfect decorum during the brief but very important expose by our honourable minister, Madam Julia Duncan Casera. Thank you very much for the evening. Thank you very much, my Honorable Vama Fofana. We were at this point now, uh, the program says National Atem. We should say thank you to the women of Most Atem. definitely, Madam. want to say a big thank you to the women of Staten Island. I show the men has something to do with it. It is often said that little is much when God is in it. I want to tell you that I will adore this award. I will cherish it and I will know that I always have a place in Staten Island. Thank you. Anytime, madam. Anytime. So with that said, we will rise up, sing our national anthem, which is going to be led by the husband of our vice president, Mr. Prince Yitz. <laughs> He's our historian here on Staten Island. <laughs> Come here, go ahead. <laughs> One, two, three.
Johnson to close us with a word of prayer. You know, every time you open things in prayer, it's good to close it in prayer. Come on. I said they missed me last Saturday because I didn't stay for the closing prayer. Let us pray. Our most high God, our Jehovah Jireh, our King and King and Lords of Lord. Lord, we thank you for this occasion. Lord, it was not a mistake that this occasion was planned. Because everything that is going on in Liberia today, when we think about what we came from and where we are today and where we're going, we say, Holy is your name. We magnify your name. Your name is worthy to be praised. Mothers are not crying anymore for their children. Fathers are not hiding in the bushes anymore. Yes, God. When we cried unto you, you answered our prayer. You are the prayer answering God. But Father, the work is not done yet. It's just the beginning. Lord, we pray for our government officials, specifically right now, our sister that is in our midst. When she had decided that she was going home and buying one-way ticket, she didn't know what to expect. But Lord, because her heart was with her people, so you answer her prayer. Lord, help us for us to make up our mind to go home and give back. So much has been given to us. We are blessed to be in a land of the rich. But we still got family back home. Help us to go back and give back. Lord, today we bless this occasion. We thank you for everyone that is represented here. Lord, they could have left and gone somewhere, but because of the love of country, the Basel men say, Bloche. So we came. Bless every home that's represented here. Go with us now, Lord, as we leave. But not to forget this occasion. Not to forget our homeland. Not to forget our motherland. Because tomorrow we will head back to that land. Thank you again, Lord, for this day, for the planner of this occasion. Bless and continue to keep us safe, sound, as we work for your kingdom. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you very much. And this program has come to an end. Oh.